Hey everybody, Rebecca here coming at you from the bedroom because I'm standing in front of my vision board here and uh, this video is going to be a lot happier, a lot more positive than some of my most recent ones because I am now officially debt free. Cheers to you, we are celebrating that for sure today. So y'all can see on this uh, vision board of mine here, this little debt free. I am now officially debt free for the first time in my adult life. And y'all, um, if you've been with me, if you are super OG on this channel, I have been on YouTube since 2018. I started my channel and I still had $71,000 worth of non-mortgage debt left to pay off. I began this journey at around $89,000 worth of non-mortgage debt. So it has been a long time coming. I will admit that uh, being debt free was never the end goal for me. This is just a progress point along the journey of reaching financial independence and retiring early. That's, um, that's ultimately what I'm trying to do here. So I have alternated between paying off high interest debt and focusing on that and sometimes focusing on investing more. So now that I'm completely debt free besides my mortgage, uh, I can actually focus on just investing as aggressively as possible. And maybe I should have made a completely separate debt free video just to celebrate that milestone in and of itself because it is a big one. I do recognize that. But I don't know. I just see it as like a stepping stone on the journey. I'm definitely pumped for it. And uh, I mean, don't get me wrong about that. I know that this is a huge milestone to celebrate, but I just see it as, um, you know, part of the journey and part of the process for me. So yeah, this video is going to be um, celebrating the debt free portion here. And I wanted to start with that because that is the biggest positive news that I have. And we will do a April budget update so far for the month since we are about halfway through April already. And then I want to do just another quick little work update because after I get through with this video, I am going to make my May budget plan video and um, there's going to be some bigger expenses on that budget than what I had originally thought, but we'll get to that later. So. First things first, I am debt free and I want to color in that last icon for my uh, car debt color chart and get that completely done. Let's do that. I'm not going to lie, that felt really good. And I had the volume turned down because I've got my vacuum cleaner uh, going around the house. So back to the bedroom where I can shut the door and we can finish this video. But uh, that felt amazing. Probably going to light that thing on fire later. But um, for now, let's take a look at the April budget and see how things are going so far. All right, here we are looking at the April budget. This is gonna be the last month where I have this red section in here for debt. And uh, oh, I think when I started my channel, I'll have to go back and look, but I am pretty sure I had seven line items in that uh, in this category for debt when I started this channel. So um, it has been a long time coming, you guys, and uh, I'm just so excited to not see that anymore in the budget going forward. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so start at the top here with the net income for the month. Y'all can see I did have some carryover from March, and that was right on target, $226.59. Uh, I have gotten my first paycheck in, and I know I mentioned in a recent video that my schedule was changing and I won't be working Friday nights anymore. So that's going to mean that I won't get the weekend shift differential in addition to night shift differential. So 
that'll mean my paychecks are going to decrease slightly going forward. So once I get my first paycheck in where I have had my new schedule reflected for the entire two weeks, then I will update what my paycheck should be. But as of right now, I'm just leaving this at the 2390, but this paycheck, let me think. Uh, yeah, my new schedule is starting next week. So this paycheck should reflect the two weeks of my new schedule, which is gonna be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we'll see how much this is. It'll probably be less than the 2390, but um, whatever it is should reflect what my paychecks will be from my full-time job going forward. So still waiting on my North Carolina tax return. It's taking a while, but whatever, it's only $144, uh, but that'll hit at some point. I was able to sell all of my yard care stuff, thankfully. Um, my neighbor Richard has completely taken over, taking care of the outside of my house. And y'all, I cannot even begin to explain <laughs> what a mental load off that is for me. Um, yeah, I should have done this a long time ago, to be honest. I mean, yes, I do pay him to take care of the outside of the house and I am able to do it myself, but it has been so nice to not even have to worry about that. Worry about what is the weather doing? When am I gonna be able to squeeze this in? I have gotta wake up early enough so that I have enough daylight left to take care of the yard. Yeah, all of that is just off my plate now and I have less stuff around the house, which makes me feel better. Um, so yeah, I got $350 for selling all of my yard care equipment and um, so, so far for April, I have brought in a total of $2,972.44. Moving down into the bills and spending section of the budget, I usually pay my mortgage payment out of the first paycheck for the month, but because I really wanted to just get my car paid off and be done with it, I put almost my entire first paycheck towards the last payment on my car to get that done. So I'll have to take my mortgage payment out of the second paycheck coming later this month. Um, and that's fine. I can always switch back come May. And for utilities, I budgeted $125. I came in a little bit less there at $115.68. I haven't gotten my internet bill in yet, but it should be $65.25. Gas and car wash, I have spent $41 even so far this month um, out of the $120 that I've budgeted. So yeah, I probably will come in under budget there, which is good. Uh, food and household, I budget $600 for this. I am sitting at just under $400, but whenever I do these mid-month budget updates, they my food and household budget always includes the last weekend from the month before. So it always looks like I'm going to be over budget on my food and household budget, but sometimes I'm able to stay underneath, but that is just how my budgets work for me. Yard care, y'all, I finally got it out of my neighbor. <laughs> how much he wants me to pay him every time he comes over and cuts the grass for me. So he told me every time he comes over, uh, $30 would be enough for him. And that is more than fair, you guys. But the last time he came over, he did cut all of the bushes outside of the house. So he did all the hedge trimming and the weed eating and all of that. Um, so since he did a little bit extra the last time, I sent him a little bit extra. Uh, I sent him $50 the last time instead of 30. And so, so far this month, I have spent $80 for yard care outside the house. I budgeted 150 because I mean, if he comes every single week to do it at least once, I think that would be the most that I would ever spend in a month for yard care. So I'm just gonna budget $150 and uh, hopefully I'll come in under every month for that. Just depends how much rain we get really and how quickly the grass grows. Um, oil change for my car. I did budget for this in May, but it was getting close enough to needing to be done that I decided to go ahead and get it done um, for reasons that I will get into with the work update here, but continuing on with the budget, uh, meds, vitamins, and protein. I have not made an Amazon order yet. I know I need to order a bunch of vitamins. I did pick up my new uh, 
thyroid medicine prescription. So that's this $6.36, but yeah, I do need to make a Amazon order for some vitamins later on this month, and I will probably do that. Personal and miscellaneous, I have spent $136.78 so far in April, and uh, y'all can come at me in the comments if you want to, but I'm going to be spending a lot more. Um, <laughs> I have decided to just reward myself for becoming debt free and um, buying something that I've had my eye on for a while and I always talk to myself out of it because again this is something I can do myself and it's an expensive item um, but it is something that would save me a lot of trouble so I'm going to buy an automatic vacuum cleaner slash mop floor robot another um yeedy product i have a yeedy floor vacuum cleaner that goes around and vacuums the house for me and it does a really good job um but i have always mopped the floors um myself so yeedy has come up with this new robot that will automatically mop your floors for you too and i've just been really happy with my yeedy vacuum so i'm gonna treat myself to this automatic mop machine that they have now and it is uh eight hundred dollars <laughs> so i mean it's expensive yeah that's a lot of money but um you know i paid off eighty nine thousand dollars worth of non-mortgage debt in the last few years i can spend eight hundred dollars on myself it's fine so I'm going to do that and hopefully it will work as well as advertised and save me a lot of time. Um, you know, having a big old dog like I do, <laughs> his muddy footprints coming in the house sometimes. Uh, yeah, this is going to be nice to just have a machine. I can say, hey, go clean up these muddy footprints and um, I don't have to do it myself. So that's going to be kind of my big treat for myself to celebrate being debt free a fancy mop vac ah well <laughs> i feel like i should do something bigger than that but um maybe i will uh we'll get to that when we get to the may budget plan video but anyway um i haven't ordered the thing yet but i will later on this month so that's going to be a lot more in the personal and miscellaneous spending budget. This $136 I've already spent was um, spent on, oh, a new earring. <laughs> I know, I keep getting earrings from Etsy, but uh, the last one I thought I was going to buy, I got last month, and it ended up being too small. And... I mean, it's an earring, so you can't really return it after you've, you know, tried it on and it's too small. Um, I could use it for other piercings, but I wanted to use it for my conch piercing in the middle, and it was too small. So I had to order another one. So I bought a new earring, and I bought some new music from the Apple Store, and I contributed to a, a GoFundMe for somebody. So uh, that's the spending I've done so far. And considering I didn't really budget for anything this month, I knew I should have, honestly. I knew I should have when I set up this budget, but I just wasn't sure what I was going to buy for myself um, for being debt-free. And uh, now that I've decided on that mop vac thing, yeah, it's pretty expensive, but it is what it is. You know, I'm just going to treat myself to it. So the debt section we have talked about already. The last payment on the car has been set in. I have a zero balance and that feels amazing. Considering I had initially thought that it would take me the first six months to pay off the car when I was setting up my 2024 annual budget. To be able to do that, essentially in the first quarter, I mean, sure, we're two weeks into April, so a little bit over but I did it in about half the time I thought I was gonna be able to. So, I mean, I'll just give myself a pat on the back for that one. This has been something that I have been just hyper-focused on for the last few months and I made it happen. So I am so glad to finally be debt-free. And that brings us to the last section here, which, which is the investing and fire tracking portion of the budget. Now, I only show these final numbers at the end of the month to channel members but so far for april 
I do have a 12.45% savings rate because even though I have been aggressively paying off my car, I do still contribute to my work retirement account. So um, that's what this reflects. And my am I financially independent yet? The fire number that I am aiming for as of the middle of April anyway, for the portfolio update, I am sitting at about 53% of the way to my FIRE number. And once I get to the point of being able to invest aggressively, it is gonna be amazing to see what this savings rate is going to be able to be. I'm expecting easily to be able to save 60 to 70% of my income every single month. And it may even be higher than that once we get to the work updates here. Now I say, um, once I am able to invest aggressively. And technically I am able to do that right now, but I do have a larger expense coming up in May, I think, um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's get to the final balance here. Y'all can see I'm actually in the negative by about $200. So, um, you know, that's fine. Most of these uh, expenses are sitting on my credit card. They're just waiting to be paid off and I will do that with the second paycheck when it comes in later this month. So um, yeah, that's where we're at with the budget right now. Let me get to the work update last here for any of you who are interested. Okay, so when we last left off with all of my sad, really, work updates, um, I mean, really the only positive thing I had was that my nights were getting together as far as um, my work schedule. And, you know, that's a good thing, even though it meant I was taking a little bit of a pay cut, I was still glad to get my nights together. So that was good. But the really shitty thing that was going on was that my work was now enforcing some new policy that they say exists that they can't show to me that um, I can only take two weeks of vacation at a time. Anything more than that is considered a personal leave of absence, apparently. And you have to fill out a form to apply for that. And there's no guarantee of reemployment when you come back from a personal leave of absence. So that's where we stood with the work drama. But in the response that I got, I didn't get an outright denial of the PTO time that I had put in. There was some lines in there about like, you know, if you can work with your team and uh, get your shift covered, then, you know, we can consider the longer vacation requests. Well, some good news there. Uh, my company has a lot of ultrasound travelers right now, as we have had for the last few years. Um, many places are relying on travel staff for healthcare right now. Not just ultrasound, but travel, everything. Nurses, doctors, um, other imaging modalities. It It's a lot of travelers right now for healthcare. But anyway, we've had some really good ones come through our department. And we have one traveler right now whose contract is going to be up in the middle of May, but I have been, you know, seeing her every week and talking to her. We've gotten to know each other pretty well, and she feels for me in my situation with me and my husband, and she, um, you know, is a good worker and wants to work, and it is good money when you do travel ultrasound, and she is willing and has told me to go ahead and relay this to my managers and stuff, and I have as of yesterday, so of course I haven't gotten a response yet. But um, she is willing to extend her contract for a few weeks so that I can take off three weeks if I want to, to go to Sweden and see my husband. And I would absolutely love it if my work would allow me to do this. Um, you know, it. The two weeks is just really not enough time to fly over to Sweden and visit for a few days and then fly back here and get back on night shift and come to work. Two weeks is really not much. Um, you know, I would have done it. I would have done two weeks just to get what time that we could have together and me to have a small break from work. But um, three weeks is really a lot better. So I am hoping that they will agree to allow her to do this. Um, 
they may not just because she is a traveler. So, you know, travelers get paid more money. They may not want to pay a traveler to cover for me, but we'll see what they say. As of right now, I haven't gotten any feedback from them, but I think they'll probably take her up on the offer. I mean, we've been paying multiple travelers for our department for years now at this point. So what's three more weeks, really? Um, and honestly, if they don't do it, then <laughs> y'all will know for a fact that they are really retaliating against me for bringing up some other issues in the department that I did a few months ago. But anyhow, there's hope. That's the positive thing going on with work right now that maybe I can actually get a good vacation in for three weeks to Sweden. The other thing going on with work updates. So since my nights are together now and I'll be working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night going forward, I have actually sent out a few different feelers and applications for some different travel jobs in the area. And there is actually a permanent position close by me that I may consider taking in addition to my full-time job that I already have. Because most weekend third shift ultrasound jobs are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if it's full-time. If it's part-time, then it's usually just Saturday, Sunday. So, you know, I'm open to doing whatever right now since I am free to do that on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there have been several local jobs that have popped up that are available. And some of them are travel. I have applied to a few of them, but um, one hospital system in the area, they will not allow you to take a travel position if you aren't actually more than 50 miles away from the facility. They don't want to be paying you traveler rates. They just want you to take the job permanently for less money. So, <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what it is there. Um, but there is another company in the area. I saw a travel job posted for just Saturday and Sunday night. And I am closer than 50 miles to this facility, but they will accept a local person for a travel contract. It's just that you get paid a lower rate. So I'm considering taking that job. The only problem I have with it is that, you know, I'm okay accepting a lower rate than what a traveler would make. My problem with it was the company that I went through for the travel agency offered me an hourly rate that's less than what I make at my full-time job right now. So, you know, I'm okay just taking less than what a traveler makes, but I don't want to make less than what I'm making right now. That doesn't really make any sense for me. I mean, why take on a temporary second job, travel farther for less money? So, yeah, um, but Actually, the traveler that I have who offered to cover my vacation for me, she has a recruiter and she's going to have him look into that job that I found for me, potentially. It depends what my work says about my vacation, but long story short, she thinks that he might be able to get me a better rate. Um, but the thing is, I don't know if I can actually take that position if I'm going to be going to Sweden for three weeks, you know? <laughs> I'll be out of the country for three weeks of the 13 week contract. So they may not even want me at that point, you know, but anyway, that's kind of up in the air. But if that doesn't work out, when I come back from Sweden, I am considering just taking a permanent weekender job that is local to me. It's about the same distance as I drive already for my main job, but, um, it's full time. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. So if I take that position, that means I would be working six nights a week, you guys. <laughs> but doing that, even if it's just temporary, six nights a week, I'm debt free. I would have two incomes, two full time incomes coming in and basically living off of one out of the four paychecks I would get in a month. That would be a lot of money saved. And I'm thinking that I could 
do that, at least temporarily, until I know for sure if my main job is going to give me the rotating schedule that I want when their new hospital opens. Now, I don't have a date for when that hospital is opening, but it is slated to open at the end of this year. So, you know, if I could stick out working two jobs in the meantime, until I know for sure whether or not the schedule I actually want is going to happen, then, um, you know, I think I could do that. And I would really be saving a lot of money in the meantime. Um, and, you know, when the new hospital opens, if my current company is just not going to give me the schedule that I want, and, you know, things keep deteriorating at my current job, it might not be a bad thing to have my foot in the door elsewhere. There's also the potential that this second job could be more money than what I currently make. Um, you know, being that it is third shift, I'll have a night shift differential, but it's also a weekend job, so I should get the weekend shift differential as well. So, you know, I'm really considering that. And this is why I am waiting with bated breath to see what my job says about allowing me to take this three-week vacation to Sweden. I would really kind of like one last hurrah <laughs> visit over to Sweden to see my husband for a while before I potentially take a second job. And um, I know that I have been in this boat before with considering second jobs and nothing has worked out so far, but I feel like this one actually has a good chance of working out. I actually know the lead ultrasound technologist at the facility where this second job is. Like I mentioned in previous videos, uh, the ultrasound community locally is pretty small and everybody knows somebody. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the thing about the job is though, um, they don't actually have it posted yet. There's something about the listing that they were fixing and they were going to get it reposted. But um, if the travel job I found for Saturday, Sunday night doesn't work out, I could always apply for this second full-time job. But really before I do anything too aggressively, I need to find out if my job is going to allow me to have this trip to Sweden because it's a lot better to know that going into an interview for a potential second position. Um, that way I can just give them a heads up like, hey, I'm happy to take this job and work for you, but I have this trip planned and this is non-negotiable for me. So, you know, and there's there's a chance. I could always just say that up front, go ahead and plan for it. Um, and, you know, if they don't want me, fine, because that's a long time off. But if it ends up that I'm not able to make that trip for some reason, then I can always just say, hey, you know, things happened and the trip got canceled. So they would probably like that because then I would be available to start sooner. But uh, yeah, so that's another long update about just how work is going and what I'm thinking about doing for the future. Y'all let me know if I'm crazy down in the comment section below for considering working six 12-hour shifts a week. This is actually something that I have done before if you've been with me um, on the channel for a while. Uh, then you know there was a period of time there where my work got so short-staffed that I was the only person covering my facility at night. So for a while there I was working six or seven nights a week for a couple months at the facility where I currently am. but. Anyhow, I've done it before. I can do it again. Um, and this time I would be debt free doing it and saving a lot of money. So you can tell me how crazy I am down in the comment section below. But hey, leave me a like if you respect the hustle. <laughs> That'll cover it for this one. Let's do the May budget plan next. I will see you guys over there. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.